All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. The affair of the heart. Sounds like a romantic involvement. A classic affair de cœur. Actually, we're thinking of a love affair with God. It may sound sort of trite, naive. Why don't you think about that with me today, because it may ring true to you. You may think of love as something that goes between two people. However, love is not an emotion. Love is not sensual. Love is not sex. It may use these elements of the person as a conduit through which it naturally flows in the process of communion. But the communion is or should be a transcendent thing. As Fillmore says, love is not the plaything of human volition, it's the activity of divine law. In the only definition for God in the entire Bible, we're told God is love. Since we were created in the image likeness of God, we were created in and of love. No, it does not say God is loving, or God has love, but God is love. It's talking about an omnipresent universal force that flows ceaselessly within us with an amazing support. Behold, I have loved you with an everlasting love. As man becomes aware of this flow of love activity of God in him, he feels a sense of yearning, hungering, to return home, as it were, to accept this love in a personal way. He finds that the only way to achieve peace and fulfillment in life have a continuing affair with God, an affair of the heart. He comes back to renew his oneness, to accept this divine power. When we talk about God, it's a strange thing, but all of us have been conditioned in some way, many different ways, to a concept of God. Anyone who has ever, in his early days, tried to draw a picture of God is invariably drawn a picture of a man, a huge man, up in the sky somewhere. We've all gone through that period of our life. Many of us, many of us feel we've let that go. We have a good insight of God today. The idea of God is always an enigma to man. It's been something that's beyond words, beyond thought, beyond meaning, beyond perception. It's always something out there, something separate and apart. You may have read the piece in the uh, Current Life magazine, The Face of God. Many little essays featured by people telling about what God means to them and what God has done for them. The thing that I feel in consciousness as I read this. I'm intrigued by the tremendous influence of anthropomorphism, the person of God. You find practically no sense of the presence of God in this piece. It's pretty much the same as we find most everywhere. We grasp the idea of the presence that is all present. Prayer takes on a whole new meaning. We thought of prayer as something that you say and something that you do to God or for God, something you ask God for to, for you. We get the concept of the presence of God that is present. Find that God is not somewhere. God is a wholeness we experience in consciousness, enables us to live with the license of a higher order of beings, as Thoreau says, to draw upon the highest levels of our consciousness. For God, in a very real sense, is the wholeness of you, the allness of you, the activity of the whole universe expressing at the point where you are. 
It's not in the human mind to really understand this. We take what I call the unity concept, the unity principle. The whole of God is present in all his entirety, at every point in space at the same time. The whole of God, present in its entirety, at every point in space. The whole of God is present in you, as you, as the God self of you, the allness of you. We talk about love, divine love. Divine love is not a reservoir of love somewhere that comes to you and, and dribbles, dribbles, dabs and dribbles. Divine love is the allness of love, which is as incomprehensible as the force of gravity. You can't find gravity anywhere. It doesn't exist somewhere. There's a big, not a big pool of it somewhere that is doled out in little bits to hold you in place on the earth. Gravity is an all-knowing, all-encompassing universal presence that is everywhere present. So with love, so with God. It's a little exercise that some of you have experienced with me in times past, but if you have, it won't hurt you to do it again. For those of you who have not experienced this, it may give you a new insight into trying to find the activity that we call God. I want you to close your eyes for a moment. We'll have an experience in visualization. To make this work for you, you must be very naive, very childlike, very simple. Just let, let the words move you as you visualize that which is suggested. We're sitting here in this auditorium, surrounded by loving people, in a friendly atmosphere. You're sitting next to someone or someone nearby you. You're confident that these are all people that are loving and friendly. I'm going to have you do something. When I snap my fingers, I want you to see all the people in the room disappear. You're here alone. All the people will disappear. auditorium. As I snap my fingers again, the auditorium will disappear and you'll be sitting on the ground outside. Sitting on the ground, looking at the great Christmas tree in the square out in front, the other buildings of Lincoln Center, buildings of the city off in the distance in this beautiful day. As I snap my fingers, the ground beneath you and the whole earth is going to disappear. Suddenly you're in space. And you're not falling, you're very secure. Off in the distance you see the moon. And now the moon disappears. You see the sun. The sun disappears. Now you're in space. You look out and up and down and around you in all directions. You see a great blanket of stars, pinpoints of light. And you see them in every direction, the whole orb circle around you. The stars are friendly, projecting little rays of light to you. You may think of the words of Plotinus. He says, the whole universe rushes streams and pours into you from all sides as you stand quiet. So you stand quiet and you accept this tremendous blessing coming from all sides. Suddenly become aware that you're at the center of the universe. At the center of God. It's all present where you are. Let the impact of this register in your consciousness. And let's return. The sun returns. The moon returns. 
and the earth returns and we're sitting on the ground at Lincoln Center. Even Fisher Hall returns and you're seated in your seat here in an uh, lonely auditorium. No one else here but you. And all the people come back. We're home. Just feel grateful about that. You can open your eyes now. Did it work? The impact from this should be, if you stop and think about it, you didn't go anywhere. You didn't go anywhere. You didn't leave this place. Everything disappeared from around you, but you were still where you are. In other words, when we talk about praying to God or praying, having a meditation or whatever, something you go to, it's not something you do, something you say. It's a matter of taking the, like peeling the leaves of an onion, taking the covers from you, the barriers, the masks, letting it all go. You realize that you're always as the visualization indicated, at the center of the universe. Always surrounded by supportive forces, love, understanding. You're in a friendly universe, in a friendly experience. A lot has been given to the idea of meditation as an aspect of prayer or meditation for your own self. It always seems to me that meditation as well as much of prayer, is overcomplicated. The technique is a lot of things we do, phrases we express, positions of the body that we take, visualizing lights in our head and all sorts of things happening and feeling this and that and the other thing. Meditation may be that to some persons, but you have your own experience. The great Indian yoga master, Aurobindo, whose followers developed all sorts of techniques of meditation, many of which are in conflict with one another. But Aurobindo said, it's not necessary to teach you how to meditate. If you're honest and sincere, you'll find the way for yourself. It's simply a matter of experiencing yourself at the deeper level of being, where you are a spiritual being, a whole creature. Talk about getting centered in ourselves. The phrase we use often. What does this mean? Do we go into ourselves, go into some place within us or above us or transcendent to us? No, you don't go anywhere. To get centered. You simply open your eyes or close your eyes, whatever you, how you want to look at it. Turn away from the experience of the world. Jesus said, judge not according to appearances, but judge righteous judgment. It's not setting things right. It's not making something happen. It's seeing things rightly. It's not time to go to God, reach for God, pray for God to do something for you. Be still and know that I am God. Not that you're all of God or that you're a God with great power in, in your ego. But you are the activity of God expressing at this point as you. When you know that, the whole idea of meditation becomes simple. Just a matter of closing your eyes. In whatever way you can get yourself separated from the human, the physical, the sensual, the emotional. And experience yourself for a moment as the spiritual being. Spirit being you. In this consciousness, the great freedom, great insight, great love, great understanding. There's another little illustration that can be helpful, at least it is to me. Think of a wave in the ocean. 
What is a wave? Look at it carefully, you say, well, it's a body of water in the ocean. It's a form in the ocean that moves from place to place. If you stand on a pier and watch the flotsam go by, the interesting thing is it doesn't go by, it stands still. The wave goes by. And the flotsam simply bobs up and down above the wave and stays wherever it is. So what is a wave? Wave is a form of energy that moves through the ocean. The water that makes up the wave at a given moment is the ocean expressing itself as a wave. But the energy is the reality of it. The wave moves on. But the energy is the vital force that is ever-present. What are you? You are the activity of God expressing as you where you are. The whole of God. The allness of God. When you realize this, it gives you a whole new insight in prayer. Prayer is not reaching for God, trying to get ourselves across to the infinite, telling God of our needs and troubles, letting all that go. Because if you are the activity of God expressing as you, if you're a spiritual being, a whole creature, and the whole of God is present in you at every point in space, every moment in time, you don't have to tell God what your needs are. Jesus said, the Father knows what things you have needs of even before you ask him. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Activity of God, then, is the wholeness of you present where you are, always, with one desire to perfect itself and project itself in and through you. In a very real sense, God in you is the God self of you. You never get closer to God than by just closing your eyes and being still, letting the activity support you. It's always present. In your work when you're engaged in a creative project and you're casting about for ideas. The presence of God is present in the creative form, flow. If you're driving in traffic and you see a critical situation coming up, calls for a quick maneuver, quick action, you know that the protection, protection presence of the activity of God is present wherever you are. You can know it, tune in on it, and experience it. If you have a physical problem, it's harassing you and worrying you, something painful, discomforting. You know that the activity of God in life is present in you, as you. Has but one, need, one desire for you. We've gone through stages where we've accepted the old traditional idea of the will of God as being something separate from our conscience. And I hope it's God's will. Sometimes we ask in our prayer time, if it, if it be God's will, If it's right for you, if it deals with your wholeness, if it deals with your success, if it deals with the fulfillment of the ideals of your life, it's right for you. And it's God's will for you. God's will is a ceaseless longing of the Creator, seeking always to perfect Himself in that which He's created. A ceaseless longing of the Creator. It's a hunger in the very activity of God, a hunger, a thirst, a drive, a yearning, to perfect itself in you. So more than anything else, healing, spiritual healing, is a matter of getting still, letting go of all the barriers, the earth, the moon, the sun, that you can find yourself at the center of life, at the center of the universe that's supported. Healing is trying to manifest it through you. Letting go of the frustrations the masks that confuse, and accepting yourself as you are in spirit, whole, oh, complete, perfect, letting it happen. As August has so often, just say yes to it. The thing about it is the, the great need in prayer is always to get still and get ourselves 
in the consciousness in which we're continually supported from the outside. It's not something you do. The other person says, well, if I have a meditation, what do I do? What do I say? What am I supposed to feel? It's where most of us are in human consciousness, because we live in a sensual relationship with our environment. We sense things, we smell things, we touch things, we feel things. So when you're in meditation, what do you touch? What do you, what do, you do? What do you say? You don't say anything. You don't touch anything. You don't try to do anything. It's not doing. It is not doing. It's going to be done, it is it? It's not doing. Rather, it's not doing. It's not trying to do anything. A complete sense of letting go. Just experiencing, feeling, recharging. It's a good illustration of a battery sitting in a battery charger. The battery might ask, what do I do? Just accept the charge. Let it happen. We could be as naive and as simple as that. We'd find that most of our difficulties would be resolved instantly, even before they happen. We could just get that sense of trust in the universe. We say at our retreats all the time, trust the process. There's a process of the activity of infinite is always working in you. Always seeking to inspire you. Always seeking to give you the right idea, to give you the right direction, the right strength for your body, the right peace for your relationships. You can just trust the process. There's another aspect of prayer that usually we draw all of our attention to, saying the words. All the way from words we get out of a prayer book, Words we get out of a daily word. Words that are words that we call affirmations or treatments, speaking the word and so forth. This is a very vital part of prayer. Where we get lost in this whole experience, we tend to lose sight of the fact that the whole of God is present where we are. The prayer is not putting on a performance for God. It's not saying the right words. We say them enough times, God will say, okay. I've heard teachers say, this is an affirmation that will help you. Say it over 20 times in a loud voice, and it will come true. I'm a child of God, 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 I'm a child of God. Jesus said, use not vain repetitions. Enter into the inner chamber and close the door. Pray to the Father in secret. Wordless silence. What about the words? What are they for? The Bible says, speak the word and it shall be done. You see, as long as we're saying the words out of our human consciousness, we're trying to make something happen. See, being the word of healing for a friend, speaking the word of prosperity for ourselves and our business, being the word of peace for the world, is something we're trying to do out here. We're trying to do it out of our human consciousness. Words have no power of themselves. That's shocking to many who have been conditioned to the idea that words are the most powerful agents in the world. Words have no power. But the word is imbued with power by the consciousness in which you say it. The word becomes a, an instrument, a conveyance, a channel through which tremendous things can happen. The important thing is, your word must be rooted and grounded in the activity of the God within you. So always, before you have any sort of a prayer, it's important to go within. Let go of the desire you have, the need, the project that's so important to you, the words you're speaking for. Let it all go for a moment. Just get still. Feel yourself at the center, the whole supportive universe around you, filling you, thrilling you with energy, creativity, healing power. And in that consciousness, speak the word. And you don't have to speak any loud series of phrases and statements. You don't have to harangue God, pleading, supplicating, being aggressive, all the various things that we're told to do. You speak the word. 
The word goes forth, as I said, like a feather on the breeze. I spread, the word is not for God. The word is for you to get in tune. When you get in tune with the divine force, and as Jesus says, the word is not my word, but the word of him who sent me. Prayer is effective. You get yourself tuned into the power. Project the power. Not as your words, not as your consciousness, not as your desires, your ideals, but giving way to the desires and ideals of the divine force within you. Not something separate from you. It's your own God self, your own spiritual ideals, the transcendent force that's always with you. When you speak the word in that consciousness. It goes forth with power. How many of you may remember my illustration of the archer? The archer stands on the firing line with a target off in the distance, up to 100 yards away. Has a bow in his left hand, and he's right handed. Takes the arrow, fixes it on the string, carefully places it at the aiming point. And the goal is to send the arrow to the target. What would you do? Throw it out? How far can you throw an arrow? Have you ever tried it? Not more than eight or ten feet. How do you make an arrow go 100 yards? With any accuracy. You take aim and you pull the tire of the arrow back, 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 back. Building up a tremendous energy force. At the time when you feel you have all the power that you can generate, fix on the target, and what do you do? Push it out? Just let it go. Go straight and true to the target. Because you're not doing it. The energy is doing it. Think about that in terms of your prayer time. You're trying to pray for something, for somebody. Whether you pray in the old terms, oh God, please help, or in a new thought term, I'm one with God's directing power and all things are working together for good. Whatever you use. Be sure to get your arrow, your missile, your affirmation, your treatment, centered in this tremendous energy of spirit, which you build up as you go down in the depths of you, beyond the human, beyond the willful, beyond the sensual, the divine self, the transcendent self. You're one with it. And at the point that you feel that oneness, just let it go. Not my will, but the will of him who sent me. Prayer is really a very simple thing. Meditation is easy and should be uncomplicated. I think of techniques and processes and special words you speak and so forth, special affirmations. It's a matter of coming home. God is in love with you. You're in love with God. There's an affair that is constantly going on. We need to give it the support of our concentration, our attention, our acceptance. This very moment, you have within you the answers to all the needs of your life. Beyond that, you can become a tremendous force for good in the world around you. Blessing people, blessing friends. We will open the way to a tremendous life for you. Believe that it is present. The infinite mind, which is the transcendence of your own mind, knows. Be still and know. Accept it. Let it flow. We just experienced Thanksgiving. It always intrigues me that the Hebrew word for Thanksgiving is yada. It means literally stretching forth your hands. Thanksgiving prayer. You'll be a stretching forth of your hands to the world around you, your loved ones, your friends, people across the world, perhaps the soldiers standing poised in the Saudi Arabian desert, 
Stretch forth your hands. Not in a human sense when you do something. To become a conduit through which the divine flow may go forth from you and go out tingling through your fingertips and going out like electric bolts in the direction of your concerns. I ask you to be still with me for a moment now. For just a moment, return to that image that we build up when we went out in space or experienced that point of space. Just feel that for a moment. Surrounded and folded by life and light and power, energy, healing. Turn your attention now to that with which you're concerned. Whether it's something in your body, in your life, or that of a friend or loved one, or some person or many persons within the world. Stretch forth your hands in the Yada spirit. Thanksgiving. Thankful for all the energies forces, intelligence in the universe focuses you. In this direction, flow forth from your fingertips, going forth to accomplish that which is sin. Healing, blessing, overcoming, giving protection and peace.